Happy Olympics, everyone. Scotty Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, Roy McIlroy will descend upon Le Golf National to try and decide who's going to be the gold medal winner. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined as always by my fellow golf betting expert, Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. We're going to break down the Olympics. We're going to give you an outright winner, top 20 finishing position. We'll look at some players that can trip you up, and we'll also go over some uh, some top finishing positions as well. Nick, let's get into this course. Uh, this course is familiar. We've seen it before, 2018 Ryder Cup. Uh, they played here. Um, looking over the holes and looking over mm -hmm. you know, the course layout, I just my takeaway is that you just can't quite overpower this thing. Uh, they did, I think they do a really good job of making some of these fairways pretty narrow to where you just can't bomb it. And you look at some of these moguls and the rough um, and a lot of the bunkers that you're seeing off the fairway. And it, it there are a lot of holes that wayward drives and approaches are going to be pretty fairly uh, punished. So I don't think these, you know, you can just bomb it off the tee and, you know, play it wherever it lies. The other thing is you're seeing these pictures. There's a lot of water. On some of these holes so there's i think we're going to see quite a few balls in the water um they like to set the greens up fairly fast but we got a little rain it looks like we'll get a little rain on tuesday so i'm not sure how fast the greens are going to be but they're certainly not going to be um super slow um i think this is uh this is going to be accuracy more than distance off the tee around the green there's going to be some difficult areas i'll get to victor hovland and guys that really struggle around the green because these up and downs are no gimmies these bunkers aren't they're not terribly difficult but they're no you know they're 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 not they're not the hardest not the most difficult there's a lot of holes where there's some roll off and there's deep rough around the green so i think it's a really good solid course to hold the olympics here i think it's going to be a good test of guys i don't think you're going to be able to see guys go super low the par fives are gettable um there are some holes where you just don't really have a lot of a lot of punishment um uh, so there's some holes that are gettable. I'm going minus 13 ish as the the winning score here. What's your take on uh, like golf national and how they got it set up this week? Uh, there's there's actually quite a bit going on this week uh, with the course and the setup. And I, I I guess I did a deeper dive because I was just interested in this in the whole the, you know the Olympics and the course itself and and how they're kind of getting ready for this particular event. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple things already, but you know first things first is besides the Ryder Cup, this is a regular course played on the dp world tour every year for the france open so you have a lot of europeans in the field uh, or, or internationals in general that have played here and play here on the regular or at least uh, a couple times over the last few years past winners that are in the event alex norin tommy fleetwood uh, and guido migliosi are all in this field and they've all won here advantage they have is that the europeans that is and, and internationals is that they've seen the course and they've played well not one of the four americans playing this week has ever played here before at least competitively so there's an advantage as far as sight unseen uh, on the europeans then you go back to the the case study of you mentioned the Ryder cup and what they did i kind of looked back into that and read up a lot on it and, and you know there's a lot of stuff this week discussing that 2018 Ryder cup and what the europeans did so they the course went through a major renovation for that particular Ryder Cup, right? They they made changes to that golf course specifically for that competition to give Europe an advantage. And where where is Europe? What's Europe's strength over uh, Americans generally? It's it's accuracy, as you mentioned. Uh, the Americans are are hit bombers. Uh, Bryson, I think it was in the the very first hole of this event. You know, smash a ball and and and, and it was either on the green or right next to it. So like, there's a big advantage uh, to length but the way they have it set up this week uh, is very similar to that Ryder Cup so normally on the DP World Tour this this place a little less than 7300 yards they have it set up this week closer to 7100 yards uh, and what that does is it takes the longer hitters and chokes down their landing area so as you mentioned squeezed areas where they're you know it's the pond banks kind of run in close along the fairway they have a ton of runoff areas in these squeezed spots where the ball's going to roll through, find bunkers, find fescue. Uh, so I think you're going to see a lot of the Americans and a lot of longer hitters in general, which includes Rory, um, lay back because there's a lot of emphasis to hit the fairways this week. Uh, and I think that takes the advantage of being able to bomb it away from some of those longer hitters. So I think you may see guys scale back with three woods, five woods, whatever it is off the tee to get in the fairway. When they built this course back in the 80s, another interesting fact is this is a pretty flat piece of property. 
<laughs> Apparently, they brought in the, what I read was uh, 300 loads of tr- truckloads of dirt for three straight every day for three straight years. 270,000 truckloads of dirt for three straight years to create all of the mounding and moguls you see along all of the holes. That's not natural. Uh, but the fairways do tend to stay a little bit flatter and have flatter lies. Again, another reason to get that ball in the fairway because you go you go offline, you're going to have a way uneven lie below your feet, above your feet, left, right, whatever. Um, and then finally, the weather pattern in this area of France apparent has been pretty wet, apparently, and that leads to, from what I'm hearing, very thick rough, which actually will be penalizing when you're hitting it, you know, your iron shot into the green. So there's kind of three factors here in play that all suggest, you know, I think the fairways hitting the fairways are going to be pretty important this week, more so than you know. I think we put an emphasis on a lot of weeks, kind of like a major, if you will, where like you got to keep the ball in play. You can't just you know <laughs> hit it anywhere and, be, and think you'll be fine. So I do think that's going to take advantage away from longer hitters. I'm not paying attention to the length off the tee. I'm paying attention more to accuracy this week. Uh, but it is interesting to see how they have this course set up. Um, and I, again, I, I do think for a lot of those reasons that you know at least. I hate to say it, but I think the Europeans and internationals probably have an advantage over Team USA um, because of a lot of those reasons. Doesn't mean I'm going to put all my eggs in that basket, but just something I'm note I'm noting uh, as we go into this week. Yeah, I agree with all that. There's a few holes I I have highlighted. I really like the sixth hole. It's 380 yards, par four. No bunkers and no water. I love it. It's just a fairway with a lot of moguls on it. Uh, the green is. 50 yards long. You measure its longest point, point to point, 50 yards long. Uh, so, you know, if the pin is close and the tee is close, there's a couple guys that may may try and swing for it. Rory uh, maybe might try and give it a shot, see if he can drive it there. Uh, drives that come up short, it's just going to be a really good, fun yardage kind of pr- prediction thing between players and caddies. So I really like the six hole. I think that one's fun. And then I think we got two really good finishing holes here. Uh, the 17th is a 481 yard par four. Again, no bunkers, no water. Fairways very narrow. Any approach uh, that misses left, it's going to roll down a hill to a landing area. It's a pretty difficult up and down. Those guys that miss the area are going to have, you know, an elevated green that they got to get up to. So I love the simplicity as a whole. It rewards straight shots uh, into the fairway and into the green. Punishes pretty wayward shots with. Uh, but it doesn't need I, I wrote down it doesn't need gimmicky bunkers or water hazards, you know. It's just a really nice, like all natural hole. And then uh hole eighteen, four hundred and seventy yard par four. What a great finishing hole. This drive has trouble everywhere. Water on the left. There's six bunkers on the right. You've gotta hit the fairway. And with these bunkers in the water, I mean, really no lead is safe on this one. This has got big number written all over it if you're wayward. Sure. Uh, off, so, um, you know, if you, you miss in the water or you're in the bunker, this approach shot is no gimme. There's water left. Uh, there's water long. There's water short around the green. So uh, I really think this is a really good one. Like if, this, if it's tied or it's like within one shot, this 18th hole we could see some fireworks on. So uh, a pr- couple of pretty good holes, and I think it's going to be a, a fun course to use. So, uh, guys, if you could, please hit the like button, leave us a comment, tell us what you like in the Olympics. Uh, it always helps the algorithm out. We had a lot of fun in the comments section last week with the um, uh, with all you guys. So appreciate you all. And if you could just hit the like button, leave us a comment. If you had not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. All kinds of content uh, with the Olympics. We got NFL and college football right around the season. We've got a ton of NFL season previews uh, for different teams. So if you want to be notified whenever those videos get put up, go ahead and subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Nick, let's take a look at total strokes gained. It, this is an interesting list. If you uh, if you would just do all sixty players uh, names we've <laughs> yeah, right. never seen, <laughs> you know, you're never seeing them. But let's take a look at uh, what's at the top here. Uh, most of these names we recognize. What do we do with this list? I think the most notable thing is the dominance of Scotty Scheffler at the very very top has finally been overtaken, at least in the short term here, with Xander uh, leading the charge in the past three months, and rightfully so. The guy is playing. Incredible, but I mean the separation from those, you know, two at the top. But really, I mean the top four, five, six. Even this list from the rest of the field is pretty significant. So, what this graphic doesn't show, uh, we have sixty players in this field, right, Andy? Let's be honest. There's twenty five that have a realistic shot to actually play well, contend, and maybe win. The other half is it's just not going to happen. I mean, you're talking 
guys that are are barely on the PGA Tour, DP World Tour, you know, from countries that just don't have a big golf uh, contingent. So this list is going to be, you know, your kind of be all. There's a few more. Like I said, you could go down in the top 25, maybe on the odds boards, and then after that, a, unless you're doing matchups or something else, you, I, I wouldn't recommend um, at least putting money on guys to to to, to win, maybe long shot top 20s and stuff like that but the separation like i said is very top happy here you have you know several of the best players in the world you got uh you know six of the top 10 players in the world and then you have a you know a decent following kind of in that mid-range and then and then a big drop off but there's no surprises here you can see the trends for players have been pretty consistent um morikawa rory obviously very very big names I have a little burst over the last three months, been playing. Colin's kind of been that guy that's been very, very consistent, but just not winning. So he's not getting any love. I kind of like Colin as a, uh, I don't want to call him a sleeper. He's not a sleeper. He's kind of more He's 12 to one, but a lot of the attention I think is going to be put on some of the other guys this week. So he's kind of one of those Americans that might uh, sneak in and play very, very well. Um, Tommy Fleetwood's a guy I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later because I do like him this week. Just steady, no matter what sample size you're using, whether it's longer, 12 months or, or shorter, three months. Uh, Victor Hovland's on here. We've nobody was hotter in the world of golf at the end of last year when he won the FedEx Cup, and then he had a big decline. Sort of been, you know, hot and cold since. Had a couple good finishes, but a couple of crap ones too. So he's hard to gauge. Um, and then you have a lot of, you know, you have. It's interesting because now we have the fifth tournament of the year where we get to see the combination of some live guys in here with the the PGA Tour, and you can see it on the board with Rom actually coming off his first live win last week. Andy, I know that excites you. Uh, Neiman. Also here in the list, so you have that mix going on as well. This list is dominated by the Americans up at the top, but I'm very apprehensive, maybe is the right word, to put a lot of money on them this week, just because of the way this is set up. Like I mentioned before, and, and the history and the knowledge, I guess, of the Europeans here on their home turf, if you will. Um, so yeah, they're going to lead the field. There's no surprise there with those top guys, but I am going to probably circle a lot of my attention in the the group right underneath this, that 10 to 20 range. The bottom three notables are, are three of those guys that fall in that range, Matsuyama, Lowry, Noren. They all have chances to win. I mean, Noren can't get the win in the States, but he has, I think it's nine uh, DP World Tour went, wins. So the guy can win, and he, can, he has won this, this uh, on this course before. So he's a good sleeper pick as well. Maybe not for you and I sleeper, but sleeper for those that are not paying attention. So I'll be probably circled just a little bit below this list, but these top guys, um, even though they're probably, I, you know, I'm not going to bet him to win, it would be hard to not see Xander finish with another geez top five again the guy's just a machine uh, but that's your top top 10 strokes game this week last week's winner johnny vegas was not in the uh in the top 10 so uh, i do expect this week could very well be or or at least very close to it maybe in the top 15 if not that time. well i hope we get another interview with joaquin neiman uh but w- w- minus 200 for him to complain about something in an interview is that like the, the bet of the the bet of the week complaining about not being invited to tournaments while he's actually at the olympics or the open championship uh yeah i've had enough of that guy uh let's yeah. see players that can trip you up it's a short field so only doing two players um i start with roy mcelroy I, like i i debated to go with scotty shuffler or roy mcelroy because you pointed out that scotty shuffler's dominance is not there and his putting has kind of fallen off but i'm a little worried about roy mcelroy um he's the least accurate driver out of the top 10 priced guys outside of joaquin neiman but i don't really know what to make of neiman's stats driving like you know like how accurate can you how accurate can you take him off of uh, live tour? Um, you know, as easy as this course can be, if you hit the ball long and straight, it can be really hard if you're not accurate off the tee. And Roy just hasn't really shown the accuracy and the patience. Um, it, I mean, talk about rearing its ugly head at the Open Championship. He gets too aggressive. Um, he tries to bomb it and thinks that's like the be all end all. And that's the you know answer to all the problems. And I just don't think that you can do that. At this course, I could see him really swinging hard on some holes that he really should be, you know, taking three wood or just laying back a little bit more. And I think he puts himself in some bad positions. He's a top three price golfer this week, and I'm just not sure this course sets up that well for him. So um, I don't think he returns top three value. Um, I could, I could, because it's such a weak field, top 10, okay. But I just don't think he's up there competing with uh, Shoffley, you know, the Shefflers of the world and any other of the uh, the Europeans that play it safe on, on the holes that they need to and get aggressive uh, when they need to. So Roy McIlroy is the first guy. And then 
Uh, Victor Hovland, he's priced as a top 10 guy this week. And his play around the green, Nick, we've documented. It's just so bad. And there's bunkers. There's rough around the greens. Hitting the greens is no guarantee if you're – if 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 you miss if you miss a, the, your your shot off the tee, it's going to be pretty tough to hit these greens regularly. So, um, out of sixty golfers playing, he's forty ninth in the field around the green. That is not company you want to be in when you look at the quality um, of this field. I think this around the green costs him enough strokes to not get him into the top ten. Hovland has no top tens in his last five tournaments, so. Um, I just uh, – Roy McIlroy and Victor Hovland, I'm just not sure these courses set up uh, well for them. As Their their weaknesses, I think, are going to be pretty, pretty exploited and on stage at this one. So those are two players that can trip you up. Let's take a look at a player we don't think will trip you up. Let's take a look at an outright winner. Nick, who are you looking at here? Listen, Andy, I know this one doesn't excite you. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood, you know, he's not a guy – I mean, we've both said it and joked about it a million times over the years. If we're playing any major, if we're playing, well, I guess maybe not the Open, but if we're playing any major or, or any big event in the States, you don't bet Tommy Fleetwood to win. He just hasn't done it yet. The guy's got game to be there and to finish near the top of the leaderboard, but he just doesn't have that closing ability to win in the States. But if you look a little deeper into his resume, this guy is a seven-time winner on the DP World Tour. Uh, he won this event uh, at the France Open, not this event, but at the France Open on this golf course back in 2017. He was a part of the 2018 victorious Ryder Cup team. He went by himself, well, in his team matches and all his matches, he went 4 1 0. So he didn't lose, or excuse me, he had just the one loss, 4 1, that week. He was excellent. So there's familiarity with the course, uh, there's comfortability here. He did miss the cut in his last start at the Open Championship, which I was very surprised with. He's generally a very good Lynx golf player but he had finished inside the top 21 in seven of his other 10 most recent starts including a tie for third at the masters and a tie for 16th at the u.s open obviously very very difficult golf courses very very deep fields with, the, with being majors he's not long off the tee but as i mentioned prior we're both discussing i don't think that's going to be a huge factor this week and in fact i think it's very important that he is accurate and which he is he ranks eighth this season and driving accuracy, hitting fairways at a nearly 70% clip. So you're not going to expect many wayward drives to get him in too big a trouble. And I think that's going to be an advantage for, for, for Tommy this week. Overall, his game doesn't have many weaknesses. He's, he's a consistent gainer in all five strokes gain categories. He, like I said, he just lacks that closing ability in the big events. And while this is another big event, again, it's, st- it's, it's, it's in Europe and it's limited field big event right it's very top heavy there's no cut this week we already know that you really i mean again Andy, what's what's the realistic probability of players that could win this event 20 25 maybe right so i think it's I'm kind of looking at it I, I, yeah I, you're probably I, I, right I, I, I think it's like maybe 12 maybe 12 <laughs> over four rounds there's just not going to be a a dark horse. (laughs) No, I mean, I I get it, but look at this field, man. It falls off a cliff. uh, When you you look at, at, at at some of these guys, like, I mean, so you got Scheffler, Shoffley, Rory, top three. Okay. And then Ron, Morikawa, Hebert, and then you got Fleetwood, Lowry, Neiman, Hovland, Tom, Kim, Alex, nor, and we're done. None of those guys are, are winning. Are, are, are winning this not over four rounds like i don't know yeah. thomas d is not half, coming out of nowhere the bottom <laughs> half of the field i can't pronounce half of the name so it's like all right well they're out <laughs> yeah. um but you're right so that's what again that's what i'm looking at 22 to 1 you know it's a decent price for for a guy to beat let's say 15 players in this field i i just the top four guys xander scotty Rory, and um who's the other one is it ludwig or is it more Kawa. Yeah, so at 10, 10 or, 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 it's 10 to one or, or lower. I, it's hard to bet that on an outright, you know? So I, I like, I like to do it for his price. And I think he's got enough of the other intangibles here to at least be in the mix. Will he do his usual Tommy Fleetwood and not close the door on Sunday? Eh, maybe, but maybe he just likes that time zone better. Maybe it's just more comfortable for him and <laughs> it'll work out in, in yeah. our favor, but I do like the price. I think at least for a price standpoint, he's better this week on the outright. Absolutely. Yeah, I listen, he is in that small group of guys that I would say, yeah, I have a chance. So if you're looking at that that group and you can get one of them at 22 to 1, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I like we just look at – I'll go over – we can do some uh, top finishing possessions here. So you got Sheff, Scheffler, Shoffley, McElroy, Rom, 
Morikawa, Bear, Fleetwood, Lowry. Anytime you're in Europe, you got to give Lowry a chance. Neiman, <laughs> maybe. He's one on live. Hovland, he's a player. He's, there's, there's no way Hovland can win if his if it, around the green is, is as bad as it is. Tom Kim, I, I don't know. He hasn't sniffed. I mean, he, he, didn't, he didn't make the cut at the Open Championship. Now he's going to win here. Alex Noren, great season. He's not winning. Corey Connors, maybe. Matsuyama, he's been bad. Minwoon Lee, he can't win when he's going up against these good guys. So I'm I like I think you got 12, 13 guys. And if you can get one at 22 to 1, yeah, I think it's probably the only way that you can play an outright winner. So um, you know, sp- speaking of some, you know, finishing positions, John Rahm, top 10, minus 140. Yeah, I'm in. Uh yep. cashed on him again on live. I, I, him finishing top 10 on live just keeps cashing every week. And it was minus 155. The guy won the tournament. Um, I got to I gotta be honest. He got some real confidence at the Open Championship. You could just see his body language getting better at the Open Championship. And then um, he looked great on live. He shot minus eight in the first round. Didn't have a great second round. Came out, played well. Um, it, it was it, – t- <laughs> Terrell Hatton had like a six-footer to – to, on 18 to send it into a playoff and he missed it. <laughs> and Nick, it was really funny. Yeah, he didn't care. That's like when li, when when the live golfers don't even take live golf serious, it's a little bit of an issue for your sport. Like Hatton, if you'd have done them, the PGA Tour would have broken his club, thrown it in the water, stormed off. Like instead, he just kind of smiled, walked off the green. Like it was no big deal. It's like he didn't care. So, but I got Rom in the top 10. I think he's, uh, I think he's got his confidence back um, a little bit better. And then when we're looking at uh, top 20s, including ties, I, I go to Corey Connors. In this field, Corey Connors is a, to me, a top 12, top 10 guy. The guy's just been like, just, you don't yeah. take him to win. But you take him to make the cut and finish well and finish, you know, above what the numbers say. So I get him at minus 165. And that includes ties in this field. He can't finish in the top third in, in, in a field with this. I mean, he's, you, you know, uh, so there's there, there are some gettable uh, guys out there. And, you know, honestly, Shoffley at minus 200 in the top 10. Uh, yeah, you're laying one to two. But. What more do you need to see from Shoffley to, to to think that he can't finish in the top ten with these guys? Uh, so I'm, I'm I mean, this course seems to set up well for him. He's accurate. He's, he's what is he now? He's now the second best putter on tour behind uh, our our boy Maverick Denny? McNeely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or uh, Denny McCarthy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I said yeah. Maverick McNeely. Yeah, Denny McCarthy's like second best putter. So his short game's working. His his long game's working. I, I like. If you wanted to take him top five, you're, you got plus money, but I would be fine with laying minus 200 on a top 10. I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's nine other guys that are going to play better than him this week. And somebody asked, like, well, well, does he have motivation going in the Olympics? Like, yeah, he's a defending champ. Yeah, he really does. Uh, he absolutely has has motivating. So those are just a few of the finishing positions that I kind of had my eye on. But the, the, ROM, the ROM top 10, yeah, I'm in. On this field, yeah, he can do it. Um, I don't. I don't think I would bet on him to do it in a major just yet, even though he did it the Open Championship. But on this field, yeah, I watched him do it all year long on the Live Tour, and uh, you know, it's amazing how quick that uh, Nick. It's amazing how quick when guys get confidence or lose confidence, how their 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 finishes just kind of change overnight. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's golf is so much mental. I mean, the the yeah. best players in the world prove that. You know, week in and week out. Well. Uh, so Nick, let's take a look at uh, one of your top finishing positions. Uh, before we do that, tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com. Sure. Uh, right now we have the in soccer we have the Leagues Cup going on, which is all MLS teams and all Liga MX teams in a World Cup style tournament. It's basically going on until almost the end of August. So we've only there's only been uh, one game for everybody played so far, um, but we have a Package up for that right now, $99 gets you the 30 days of the tournament, plus all soccer during that span. And the Premier League kicks off in two weeks' time, so you'll get the first two weeks of Premier League plays in that package as well. So that's available right now, $99. And then for golf, I have this week's tournament pack, which is obviously just the Olympics going on in there, uh, which will include a 5% uh, cross-sport parlay, another top finish here in this golf tournament, paired with uh, something in the League's Cup that I've been looking at for a while. So. 
Uh, that's available right now on my page at Wager Talk and included in this week's uh, golf pack. Love it. Let's take a look at a juicy uh, top finishing position. Uh, we love betting on this guy. He just always seems to be undervalued. Who you got and uh, who you got circled for this week? Yeah, this one's fun. I mean, I, I really started to look. I started with the top 20. And as you could, as you said about the, the difference from the top of this field to the bottom, like it, you, you quickly get some big numbers in the top 20 uh, with some of these guys in the bottom of the field. But I'm clicking on their names and looking through some data and results. I'm just like, I can't. I can't touch that guy. There's no consistency. There is nothing there, right? So it's, this is a little tricky as far as you can go down and get a nice price on a few guys, but you're going to stretch a little bit. I don't think Sepp Straka is necessarily a stretch. Uh, he's been playing very, very well. I'm going a little bit higher because, again, we only have 60 players in the field. So I'm going higher with the top 10 as opposed to a top 20, but you could certainly could do that as well. I'll say the words I would use for Straka this year is, is that he's been quietly awesome this season, especially over the last four months. You go back to the players, so that was mid-March. We're talking uh, four and a half months. He's got nine top 25 finishes in 14 starts, including three top fives. He's a, another very accurate driver. Clearly, I, I, I'm putting my eggs in the accuracy uh, basket this week. He ranks number one, Andy, in driving accuracy this season, hitting 72% of fairways. Uh, and he also ranks fifth in strokes gained approach in this field over the last three months. Both of which, again, I think will be crucial areas needed to contend this week. And his weakness in his short game, or his weakness is his short game, where he's lost strokes around the greens more than he's gained this season. The good news for me, though, is as well as he's hitting his irons right now, I think he can avoid having to rely on that short game too often. And with a smaller field this week and a smaller, like, true competitive field this week, you know, what's What's the number of players? We talked about the number of players that have a chance to win. What's the number of players that actually have a chance to finish top 20, top 10? Excuse me. It's probably a little deeper than the, the, the number to win. But again, maybe it's half the field. So plus 280 to get into top 10 and, you know, be beat the 30 players or so that could actually finish top 10, I think is a great price. And a lot of my value on guys this week is just kind of using that thought process of how many realistically could do it and who presents a good price based on on that and he's he's got a lot of a lot of things i like this week but his driver accuracy second to none literally so i love that he's not gonna get in any trouble and i think that will keep him in the mix all the time love it great price on sep straka who he is he is there's like there are a couple guys that yeah you could absolutely see pop up straka is one of them um <laughs> just randomly is this so weird that wyndham clark is like stumbling into being on this yeah, I team i look at his <laughs> <laughs> it's like a year ago it was like oh this guy's winning majors and <laughs> he's awesome and now he's priced with you know next to christian bazoot <laughs> 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 just a while i mean i'd I, I take sub straco over i'd take Strock over fitzpatrick dietry jason day wyndham clark bazoot uh pavon uh hogard so yeah absolutely uh, Strock has got way more right. upside uh there there on that one so uh five percent play is up for me at wager talk uh we've got a cross bar parlay going we got pfl this week we've also got ufc um and olympic plays um a lot of really good tennis bets are, are out there handball as well so all of those are up at the page wt.buzz slash al uh but really get that five percent play we're 28 and 12 in our last 40 cross sport parlays so um we've had five straight winning weeks in a row looking for six straight winning weeks in a row so take advantage of that we're up 84 units in 2024 and we're number two in july i believe we're up 34 units just in the month of july so looking to continue july strong and uh get august off to a really good start with another five percent cash so go grab that wt.buzz slash al all right, that's going to do it for us on the Olympic Golfs. So make sure you check out all of Nick's plays over at wagertalk.com. My plays are there as well. Good luck on all your plays, and we will see everyone next week on Tea Time.